Now you can show your support for Inside Music Cast by making a donation at InsideMusicCast.com. Your donation will help us to continue producing future episodes of Inside Music Cast and keep Inside Music Cast radio streaming 24 7. You can also receive special Inside Music Cast merch, such as t shirts, masks, stickers, and coasters for your support at various levels. Find out more at InsideMusicCast.com. From all of us at Inside Music Cast, thank you for your support. For the past 15 years, we've been fortunate to have Steve Lukather as a recurring guest on Inside Music Cast. And today, he's back to talk to us about his brand new solo album dropping this Friday, February 26th, titled, I Found the Sun Again. We're also pleased to welcome Joseph Williams, who's joining us for the first time to discuss his new solo project, Denizen and Tenet, which also drops this Friday, with both records being released on the Mascot Records label. Not only do Luke and Joe contribute to each other's new solo records, but they've enlisted some incredible musicians, including a heavy dose of Toto founding member, David Page. And speaking of Toto, we'll also include some conversation about the newly resurrected version of the band and their Dogs of Oz tour that's slated to begin later this year. Inside Music Cast is pleased to welcome Joseph Williams and Steve Lukather. Hey guys, welcome. Hey, what's hey. up? How's it going? You know, this past year has been so unusual and difficult for everyone. And, you know, the two of you have obviously made the best of it. You know, you've finished and began the promotion cycle on your uh, new solo albums, which they're both going to drop this Friday, February 26th. And you've also uh, resurrected and reimagined Toto with a new touring lineup that includes some really remarkable players and, you know, kind of a whole new energy. And Eddie and I, we watched that live stream a couple of months ago, and and, uh, we were impressed by you know, how seamless this new band seems. And uh, talk to us about how this came together and your overall impression of what's to come with Toto. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and start and, and say a little bit. It's just a continuation of what Toto is, you know, in a very, very normal sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, first of all, you know, all of the other members who could be with us still or, or touring with us and stuff would be mm-hmm. if it weren't for the fact that some people are not well enough to, to, to like do buses. Right. Mm-hmm. And some people are just finished with the idea of touring and that kind of traveling. Right. So, so Luke and I are just literally the only guys left to go out and do that kind of stuff. And then the rest is, is kind of normal Toto procedure. And that's building, you know, a group of guys that are as great of musicians as any of the originals or anybody else that's been a part of this group. It's a continuation of that, you know, high end musicianship, really. Right. Yeah. And and that does make sense because in the past, you know, you've had other guys that have uh, sort of come in uh, to help out. I mean, Greg Fillingains and you've had X and, you know, you're, you're, so it does make sense. Yeah, I mean, it's always, to, to my mind, it's always been a band of virtuoso musicians yeah. and great vocals. And, mm-hmm. and so to continue in any kind of live form means having that kind of quality of musicians. That's it's really as simple as that. Well, you know, Joe, talk to us quickly about the live stream. I mean, was it as successful as you guys had hoped? Um, and, and should, you know, should COVID keep touring from happening later this year? Is this, is this maybe an avenue you might explore to stay just to stay in front of your fans? That's you know. Listen, we'll we'll see. Yeah. We have high hopes for things getting better and easing up with the virus and stuff. And and regardless, we'll get out there eventually. But the, yeah, it was a very fun thing to do. It, you know, we listen. We would have loved for it to have been seen around the world by millions and millions of people. But yeah. But for what it, we did, and we we accomplished what we wanted to, which the main thing was was to just get get in a room and play with these new guys. That was you know, and and also for Luke and I, just to get out and actually stand somewhere and play because we just you know gets we love to play and it's just yeah. got, it was getting feeling kind of stale. So if, in that sense, it was very successful. We put the thing together, what, 10 days? Something like that. Yeah, 10 days, top to bottom. Well, I got to tell you, one thing I took away from it is that your backing vocals were, with this particular group, was as strong as I've ever heard it. Well, Joe, you answered this question, man. I mean, you know. <laughs> no, that was just a compliment. <laughs> that, was a, that was a requirement. Yeah. It was a requirement, okay. and that's a great compliment because it's a testament to casting is yeah. really what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. we, you know, we've, we, Steve Maggiora, who's, who's with us now, is just remarkable. He's got this wonderful tone that's very rich and got a full body. Plus, he sings, you know, up in the stratosphere in terms yeah. of the, those high notes and stuff. And, and, of course, Warren Ham is about as solid as you get. He also knows us so well. He just knows the parts. I've been singing with him for so many years. Yeah. We have of, of chemistry so 
really, I, I'm really Warren. Thrilled. Warren's a treasure. He's a treasure. So I'm really thrilled with the way the way the vocals are, and I, I, it has it just has to do with the cast. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, Warren's amazing. I followed him back when before the Kerry Livgren days. No, he's one of the more, most talented people I've ever known. Oh yeah, he's also one of the nicest people I've ever. Known. Absolutely. Hey, we want to shift gears a little bit and start talking about the new solo albums. And yeah. and uh, Joe, your new album is entitled uh, Dennis and Tennant. And Luke's, uh, yours is I Found the Sun Again. And knowing that there's so much collaboration on both of these albums between both of you, did you guys ever consider of doing a, a single project that you both were on or were solo albums always in the plan? No, the uh, solo albums were always in the plan. Okay. Once we finished working in, in 2019 you know luke had plans all already put in place to do a solo album that was going to be a separate standalone thing and i was doing basically the same thing i knew that i was going to use uh, 2020. Yeah, start. Yeah. i had a start but i was going to use 2020 to finish and they were very much separate entities and projects yeah but the, you know with luke's help and some of our staff i was able to get in the doors of mascot label group number one yeah so with that whole idea, it just became, and, and because Luke and I hang out so much and we were, you know, working on ideas for Toto, it just made sense. You know, what if we put these things together? So it, it sort of happened organically that way. There was never really in the beginning any discussion of doing a, a quote unquote Toto album. Yeah. That kind of yeah. Thing. No, no, that was never the intention. Was to, we were both going to do our own thing. But exactly. Just, it, just, it just so happens that we like each other. We like each other well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, of course, Luke, your album is titled I Found the Sun Again. And, uh, you know, this also has a song on the album with the same title. And uh, didn't a video drop for that recently? Yeah, Joe directed it. And we did it I, one I, day. I, and I, 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 I made it my primary school video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's funny. I mean, we made these homemade lyric videos yeah. or whatever. I mean, everybody's expecting thriller or something like that every time we put a video. Yeah, I no, like, well, yeah. I've been doing them, and it's really basically just to provide some sort of accompaniment content wise to go with the song so that you can watch it on YouTube without it being just a still picture with the lyrics there, you know. But they're, you know, they're ne they were never really meant to be like Scorsese. Yeah, we were, we're not exactly competing for like, you know, Oscar <laughs> yeah. best <laughs> best picture. But they're fun to do. And, and I'm, you know, where I'm basically doing one for whatever song, you know. Gets yeah, I mean, and we create content. That's that's a, the new catchphrase, exactly. create right. content. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, but, yeah, but how do you monetize that? I mean, it's, we're finding new ways to live in this new world. The fact is, is that if you create enough content, you can't. It'll, it'll make. It'll, it'll just happen. Trust me. It'll just it'll happen. happen. You know? I mean, <laughs> things happen organically. It's like Joe lives down the street, which is why he's part of our nuclear family. That's allowed to be in the house. You know, we get yeah. tested. Same time, he has a congratulations on your new grandson, my man. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, me, congratulations, right. congratulations, Joe. I have an autistic son who's ten, so we're we're high risk people, right? So we don't fuck around with this stuff, you know. It's not political. This is just reality, right? You know, yeah. Well, and I can't blame you. I mean, everybody should take the same sort of precautions. Everybody else is being careful too. At least the people I know. Yeah, insane people are. We've been dealing with a lot of crazy this last year, you know, and um, had a lot of time to reflect and look back at things and re-look at things. And why am I doing like, do I really want to do this? I mean, we're at the age where most people would say, fuck it, we're done. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm out of here. Well, this looks scary. But Joe and I still have this fire in us and still have music and still have the desire to play. Yep. Some guys in the band... You know, uh, Dave, Dave's still with us. I mean, I, I, I talk to Paige 6 a.m. almost every morning on FaceTime. Yeah. You go to bed then. <laughs> now we wake up. <laughs> now we're together. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just real quick. How is Dave doing? Can you talk to us about that? Dave's doing great. Awesome. He's, That's so good to hear. He's asking about lawyers in the Justin Bieber suit. It's going to have to Justin Bieber just ripped off Toto of going home. His new thing. Really? Yeah. Go listen. <laughs> Go listen to the chorus and then sing. The, oh, my gosh. And sing the chorus. Same again. key, same tempo, same chord changes, same melody. Same, just, no kidding. Just different word. Just sing. The, wow. I'm going to have to check that out. Oh, yeah. the chorus of going home in your head while you're listening to the chorus of his song. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna. We're gonna check that out. No, so, Dave, you know, so Dave's still around. Dave just can't travel mentally. Yeah. He can't leave a time zone. 
Because if he misses one medicine, he, I mean, he's 65 years old. He's, I mean, it's, it's, more, it's easy, simpler than that. He just he can't do 12 hour buses. He just he can't. can't. Right. Not yeah. built. He's not built for travel. Exactly. And and you know, fortunately, unfortunately, whatever you want, however you want to put it, we do bus trips. And right. Luke and I love it. We do great. So, yeah. And then that's all. That's the answer to that. Hey guys, it's, it's no surprise that. Um, that you both incorporated some incredible musicians on on the two albums, but like you said, guys, it's so nice to see that David is uh, David Page is. Yeah, I think you should ask uh, Joseph Williams who's the best guitar player, Steve Lukather or Mike Landau. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, who is the best guitarist, Michael Landau or Steve Lukather? Tell us about that. Wait, <laughs> just end it there. End it with ha ha ha. That's all it is. Mike Landau's. Fucking genius! I love him. He's my best friend. Twelve years old. <laughs> so, so, so let's talk about David. He's he's involved in both projects, and and uh, aside from laying the parts, you know, you know, David's presence is you know, it's, it's always been important to both of you guys. So, tell us uh, how, how integral of a role did he play on on both both records? Well, he was definitely more of an integral role on Luke's. Yeah, mm-hmm. he was on every track on my record. He was just like. I hired him like I hired a session guy. Yeah, uh, right. You know what I mean? I wanted Dave just, Dave, come down and just be David Page. Yeah. I want you to be you and not have any pressure on you. Just be Dave. Yeah, just come and play. And he was like, you serious? I'm like, yeah, Hammond organ, man. Nobody yeah. plays Hammond like you. Exactly. Nobody plays the piano like, I want real piano, real Hammond, and Jeff Babgo is going to be your, you know, the other guy. Yeah. And, he, and you guys are going to trade off and you guys work it out between the two of you who who you think should do what. Because I know you guys will know what to do. And that's what I did. Mm-hmm. And they figured it out and they always made the right call. And they everything you hear on it is live the way they played it one time. Yeah. One time only. And that's what you got on the record. Yep. That's really cool. Hey, Joe, and, and uh, Paige, you know, he co-wrote Liberty Man with you. Yeah, my th- th- relationship with him, as far as my album goes, is very much exactly the same as it is working with him in a total kind of a scenario. Yeah. I mean, my the thing that got me going doing this album was the work on the, on the Forty Trips project and mm-hmm. this oldest new project, sort mm-hmm. of leading that that project. So working with Dave is is just like kind of going back to that situation. I was, wrote a song from top to bottom with him. Yep. And then his presence is instrumentally on a few songs as well. I mean, the the most prominent is the is his Hammond stuff in in the song Black Dahlia. Yes. So and it's the same. It's like what Luke said on that song. I did exactly what Luke did. I, we hired him. Me and Jay Gresko went up there and just basically hired him and yeah. to play his amazing Hammond. So, um, but in terms of like Liberty Man, that's Dave and my relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of has how it's always been in terms of songwriting he's he's the he's one of my favorite people to, to work with and i just got to tell you though as a side that the track black dahlia is is one of my favorites on the album that's a fantastic song i love it thank you joe's album is like peter gabriel's so to me i mean he's really the meticulous the detail work is insane yeah yeah listen in headphones oh, yeah yeah Go down to your local uh, dispensary and uh, have a gummy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to do that. <laughs> it's legal. It's legal. <laughs> <laughs> Music sounds better. Well, where, where, where you guys are, it's legal. Where we I are, it's, it's still not. I love your new album, man. <laughs> I love your new album, man. <laughs> You know, it is fantastic. I mean, I've got all of Joe's work, and and I got to say, Joe, I love everything else you've done, but I think this is this is a notch above. I really think this is. is your best album. Yes. Yeah, I do. I have a lot. It's going to be huge. People are going to be minds are going to be blown. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's brilliant album. It really I, is. I just wanted to make something I could listen to in my car when I'm driving, like to Vegas or something. And you know what I mean. And it, and it, and and these days the stereos and cars sound it sound so good that I figured I'd need to make it sound better than than uh, recent stuff. But yeah. anyway, thank you for the compliment. I, oh, you're it's welcome. It's a brilliant piece where he worked really it hard. Was a, on it. it was a labor of love for no, sure. And I'm not saying that just to you know butter your balls. I mean, it really sounds good. It, it's it's no, amazing. You know, at our age, but the sound of buttering our balls <laughs> sounds kind of good. I was going to say, I was going to say, butter, buttered <laughs> balls it. don't sound so buttered bad. Buttered balls, buttered balls don't sound so bad, do they? 
<laughs> no, <laughs> you're just you're just not going to get that from me. <laughs> right, I, I hear you. Is it bad that I have a heart on right now? <laughs> I, I, assume, I assume you guys have some uh, editing here. No, no, this is this is pure Luke. Don't man. you this... dare edit this shit. Don't you fucking dare edit this oh, I'm shit. I'm not going to edit it. <laughs> <laughs> We're human beings, man. Sorry, 63, it's real. <laughs> Well, you mentioned you mentioned Peter Gabriel a little bit uh, about the the So album, and, and speaking about that, Joe, you did include "Don't Give Up" in in the project. I actually, when I first heard the song, I didn't like look at the liner notes prior to, um, to to listening to the song. But when I heard this gorgeous voice singing that Kate Bush part in the song, mm-hmm, I had to know mm-hmm. who it was, and I was just delighted to hear that it was your daughter, Hannah. She's amazing. Well, thanks. Yeah, she is. I mean, both both really. both my daughters are great singers, and they both you know grew up with me in my studio, so they know how to be in a studio yeah. and they, they sing right on a pitch. I didn't tune anything of like Hannah's voice. That's she just has this wonderful angelic thing, and mm-hmm. and in you know once when, once I had a track and realized that I was going to c- kind of go forward with doing the tune, I thought that perhaps the way the lyrics are that a conversation between father and daughter also worked really well for mm-hmm. the song. That's mm-hmm. why, I, that's why I thought it would be good for her. Does she pursue a career in music? Is she, is she a musician and doing her own thing? She's very much a musician, but she's just, just now a new mom and she's been through college studying psychology. Okay. So she's very much smarter than the rest of us in, okay. in our, in my little family. <laughs> <laughs> She's, she's a wonderful kid. No, Absolutely. you're all brilliant. She's, Your own way. She's, she's a wonderful, wonderful girl, and she. I'm so happy to have her on there. She, she's, she sings. She's effortless when she sings. It always, it always blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Luke, you have a, a few covers on your album, too. And, and one is uh, Joe Walsh's Welcome to the Club. And I, I know Joe's always been a favorite of yours. And I got to say, you kind of had a little bit of that Walsh sound in the way you approached the vocals. I, I, oh, no, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I said to Joe uh-huh. and Joe sent me back. His reply was A plus 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 plus. <laughs> he goes, 99.99999. Nothing and in parentheses, nothing's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, Love it. And he goes, and I mean that's in a classic Joe Wall sense. I mean, I mean, Joe is one of my all-time musical heroes, not just yeah. as a guitar player. Yes, he, there's always a little Joe Walsh in me. Yeah. Whenever, whenever I bend a note, yep. whenever I bend stuff. Joe was always in my veins, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And the way he produced his records and the songs, they, his songwriting really touched me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was the whole thing. All the band, James Gang, the Barnstorm yeah. band, you know, his solo stuff, the Eagles. I mean, he's just uh, great stuff. I mean, I just love Joe Walsh, man. He's also a friend of mine, and I want to yeah. do an homage to him. You know what I've always loved about Joe? Like, even if you take the But Seriously Folks album, of course it had the big hit on it, Life's Been Good, but the rest of that album, when you really listen to his lyrics and what he's doing with it, he's kind of a, even though he's, you know, always been considered the, you know, what do they call him, the clown of rock and roll or whatever, he's a real romantic. No, 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 man, he's a serious musician. Yeah. No, Joe's a funny guy. Of course he's a funny man. But um, he's also a very serious yes. fucking musician, man. I mean, he plays piano, keyboards, his chord changes and stuff. Stuff he was writing in 1969. Check out James Gang Euro. Oh, album. yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking Check about. Check that but he- out. 1969. Dick where these cats were out in 1969. <laughs> they were heroes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, and the fact that I'm friends with them is, is a plus. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, wow, I didn't drive to that. Yeah. Guys, let's talk about the musicians who played on your albums. And, you know, Joe, you know, you, you called a few guys who we know pretty well Lenny Castro, Mike Landau. Um, and again, I, I don't know who's better between Mike and, <laughs> and Luke, and I'm not going to ask that question. No, no, it, man, the apples and oranges, brother. <laughs> Luke and Mike, since I was like 19, working on my first stuff, and even before that with Mike, those these two guys have always been the guitar players for every, anything that I've done. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, long before I was ever, in, you know, even t- in Toto, you know, yeah, right. Right. You, you were playing on my solo album and Mike too. Mike and I and my brother had a band when I was a late teenager. And so uh, one of the ideas with doing this album was to sort of, you know, kind of do a couple of tracks that would be quote unquote from that old band, so to speak. So that's how yeah. Mike's presence is, is so prominent over the whole thing. 
And then, if you know, of course, Luke, you are my favorite. No. And um, <laughs> no, he has to say that. It's my house. No, 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 no. It's not. My house. I have. He knows. He, I react to. Mike to, Landau is the best guitar player in the world. I mean, they, they're both insanely great. And for my no. music, I, it requires both of them. Yeah. They're my. Well, the, the thing is, about, but here's the thing about music. Let me just interject this. Nobody wins in music. I mean, it's like it's art. You can't. It's subjective. It's, it's one man shits right. another man's chocolate. You know what I mean? Who's the best guitar player? Who's the best drummer? Who's the best singer? <laughs> How can you say that? Well, I have a list. I mean, what's your favorite taste? Yeah. If you could only have one taste, what would it be? You know what I mean? It's like what? I mean, that would that, that that puts it more in perspective. Yes. Right? I only eat eggs every day. Uh, eggs, eggs, and only eggs every day. <laughs> eggs. <laughs> anyway so but the, with the other musicians on the on the record yeah. it's just it's just a matter of like calling people first of all that i know you know what i mean the one last yeah. uh, the one thing i've never been good at is, is 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 calling somebody and saying hey you know have you ever worked with so-and-so and you know trying to make reach out to people that uh i haven't worked with because I, there's no need to everybody the guys that i know are all pretty much in my mind the best that there is so for instance, Simon Phillips, who, who hands down is one of my favorite drummers, period. Yeah. yeah. Working with him and touring with him was a joy. He's a great friend. And the song just was perfect for him, I thought. Yeah. And, and so on. Yeah. You you know, you mentioned Jay Gruska, but you also have Barbara Gruska uh, playing some percussion and drums. Tell us about them a little bit, would you? Well, Barb is my niece, Jay. Uh -huh. Jake Gruska's kids are my niece and nephew, okay. and right. and both insanely talented. Ethan Gruska is an artist; you should look into him. Wow. And also, um, you know, Barbara Gruska, who's who's you know a grown woman now. She's an amazing drummer, trained by Joe Picaro. So, okay. uh, uh, and also, she, you know, she's in the Foo Fighters. She's been in yeah. in the touring uh, group with the Foo Fighters for a couple of years yeah, too. So. Yeah. She's insanely talented, and that that what you hear on on her drums there, that's her like a pass playing exactly what we needed. I mean, wow. she's she's like as good as anybody else. Such talent, absolutely killer, 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 killer. Hey, Luke, on this album, you know the effects and the the guitar, the pedal effects are, are pure classic. And I remember that uh, Rick was uh, talking to me about the time that he spent a studio with you, and you had hundreds of effects and pedals and amps all over the floor. And oh, well, no, I, that, we were demoing amps. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was that was geez, fifteen years ago. Or That's something. a long time ago. You yeah. told me that. No, did you didn't you pretty much you knew the sounds that you wanted for each well, type of I, track. Well, I did uh, this new record. I just wanted to, I took my live rig in the studio. Okay. I just, took, you know, used my one guitar, my yeah. music man guitar, my uh, Bogner Helios amps and my pedal board, which just has a few stomp boxes on it, you know? And I, it was like performance. The whole album was a performance. You know, we also want to mention the the really cool, the bluesy jazz cover that you did, uh, you know, the classic traffic tune that you included the the that little spark fun. of the high heel boys yeah well you know i, I want to you know again i mean i tried to my record was like take 1970 early 70s and yeah. bring it into 2020 you know, or 2021 and with that sort of freedom and i've always loved steve winwood i mean he's one of my heroes one of the few yeah. guys I've ever, i had a chance to work with him. i always wanted to work with steve winwood on something yeah. i met him once and i was just like a fanboy you know <laughs> and uh he was very gracious and nice and uh, but i mean i just is an homage you know yeah all, all the covers are an homage okay. i mean yeah that's why I, I chose those covers to set the tone for the record absolutely absolutely hey joe there's there's a track that you include in your project and it's i'm um, and i'm a big sucker for a good violin solo it's it's wilma uh finger do and uh, yeah. very interesting <laughs> tune. <laughs> very, very interesting uh, because uh, you actually, it's almost like the, the rhythm track is almost like a, a trap stuttered groove that, that you uh, included on, on this album. And, you know, where did you get that, the trap going to the, to the trap vibe? How did you get there? Well, I worked with a guy named Dylan Ronan on the basic track for that thing, who's who's just a wonderful musician, an incredible producer, and and uh, 
really, really great at that stuff. And so I, you know, I sat, I was at the computer and I put in the changes for the song on the, all the piano parts yeah. with a little tiny sort of a guide rhythm. And then Dylan took that and made the basic sort of drum pattern that you hear and the, and the, and, you know, took one of my keyboard sounds and made it go, <laughs> you know, the backwards yeah, thing yeah. in the verse. So uh-huh. that's uh, all, you know, credit for what you're asking about is, is, you know, did this guy Dylan Ronan. It works really nicely. Yeah. It's fantastic. I mean, it's so clever. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. people just don't take the time to do stuff like this anymore. They don't know, you know, I mean, guys like us have been making records forever, try to find new stuff, new ways to do things. Mm-hmm. When I when I saw the title Wilma Fingerdo, I I kept listening. When I was listening to the track, I was thinking, when is she going to appear in the song? <laughs> <laughs> that song and the, and its title is a completely inside kind of a thing. The okay. song is for my mom who died when I was a kid. On all of my solo records, I do some sort of dedication or a little musical poem at the end or something. Okay. Yeah. And so this piece became the song for her. You know what I mean? Like that I no, sort of normally do. And my mother was had this incredibly funny sense of humor, and you know, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so she and my dad used to have this game, where they would try and one up each other on funny names, like, uh, <laughs> like uh, you know, Bud Fucking, or what, you know, what was what are some of those other ones like Lou Spowls? What are yeah, the, uh, <laughs> you know those. You know what I'm talking about? So they would yeah. play that game, and my mother's that my father always remembers as being the one that cracked him up the most was Wilma Fingerdoo. <laughs> and if you think about it, it's like, my, well, my dick don't work, but will my finger do? <laughs> so yeah. that, was, that was her thing. And so I decided to call it that and then spell it like a French spinster's name. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's great. Hey, hey Joseph, you, you said recently that, you know, the track Never Saw You Come and was, it really sort of captures the, the sound and the vibe that that you wanted to project right now, and, and especially vocally. Tell us a little bit about uh, why this sort of encapsulates what the vibe you want to project. Well, first of all, just the deep groove of it is just like exactly kind of what I feel in me, you know what I mean? That The groove of that tune and Mike's contributions guitar-wise just really gave uh. Gave it a genius. Gave it, gave it a great bite, <laughs> and and you know I, I'm just like that tune. I feel really satisfied with it. It's one of my and, and, it's one of my and, and also, you know, uh, in terms of what it's talking about and everything, it was it was a, it's an important subject to me. So yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> it, it's a relevant subject. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, and so I I worked on that one a, a bit, and I'm happy with the way it came out. Yeah, it's. A great track. Hey, Luke, um, you know, we've known Ken Freeman for a long time, and he's obviously done a front of house for you guys and engineered a lot. But I'd, have you ever worked with him in this capacity before? Um, no, this he... is the first time we worked together in the studio. Oh, sorry about that. That's my robo. <laughs> I knew he was a great engineer. I mean, yeah. we think about on the road with us. I mean, it's high fi. I mean, right. try to, he gets this amazing sound up front. I mean, he's really an incredibly gifted engineer mixer. Mm-hmm. He'd been to work in the studio with Bob James and all those guys doing foreplay records and stuff. And I thought, well, gee, I want to rock. I think he's the right guy. Cause what I wanted to do is try to take a, a jazz concept in terms of doing it live without vocals, everything live except the vocals. And I wanted, I needed somebody to capture that, but, but somebody could rock too. But to, to, after working with total for 10 years, yeah, he, he had those chops. So he came in the studio and, and I want, I told him how I wanted it to sound and he captured it Yeah, and then added his shit to it and made it a thousand times better. So I'm really, really pleased with how it all worked out. Yeah. He did an amazing job. He did. I mean, I'm mean, thrilled. I mean, I mean, he didn't have to say much. I mean, he just knew what the, his instincts were already there. Yeah. And I would imagine, you know, having the familiarity with you guys for such a long time, that probably helped as well, just just a knowing lot. you. Joseph, and I can say on my record, Joe really, really helped me. Joseph Joseph and Jeff Babko were the two saviors on MVPs on my record. Man. Yeah. I mean, Joe did a, took the stuff home and nurtured the background vocals and, yeah. you know, made me, made me look good, you know. Like he always does. Yeah. So I got to give him a lot of love for that, too, you know. Exactly. And co-writing and all the stuff that we did together. I mean, you know what I mean? That's sort of saying that's why it made sense for us to stay together. Right. 
you know, yeah. first we love each other. We've known each other since we were teenagers. Yeah. It just felt right. And we wanted to keep working. We still have the fire to get back on the road. Yeah. Well, the other guys don't want to do it anymore or can't, or they're not with us anymore. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? And, and like, man, there's total tribute bands all over the place. You know what I mean? Like, right. I don't, you know, we might as well do. We one. have fifth. <laughs> we've had 15 versions of this band. 15. Right. If you add, well, this guy left, this guy, this guy replaced, or this guy took over for the summer, this guy took over that, blah, 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 or we added this renew configuration, background vocals, blah, blah, 15 versions. Yeah. So we knew that the last one was coming to an end. There was some, it just didn't end well. I'm sorry. Right. You know, I mean, right. that's all I want to say about it, you know? Yeah. Yep. I have a broken heart. Now I'll leave it there. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Luke, you, you've, uh, what we've garnered right now is that, you know, this, this recording process for your album has been, and you've said it's it's been painless, fun, and, and easy. So so walk us through. I mean, you guys did not spend a heck of a lot of time in the studio or rehearsals. What was uh, – tell us about the simplicity of how you approach the whole recording. It was like doing a session. Yeah. Like we used to do. Like yeah. you just hire the right guys. You got a good – you got a good – what you think is a good piece of music. Mm-hmm. And you cast it properly like you would a film uh, yeah. and all, all the players. Yeah, the fact is, is when you get that caliber of players in a room, like in a session, whether yeah. it's for like a film or something like that, but in this case for Luke's album, you know, in terms of cutting the track and musically, there's not much preparation is needed. These guys are pros. They, you know well, what I mean? you were there. I mean, I Joe, know. you were there on the session. Joe yeah. would come and hang out every day. You know, I mean, and Dave was there. So it was almost like I look in the control room and there's Joe and Dave. God, man, we're making a total record. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave was having the time of his life. It was great to see Dave. Really, he started yeah. to really step up, and it was like you know he'd be offer great ideas and stuff yeah, i mean and, cool. and, and, really, and he's like dave was actually early to the sessions i was cracking up going hey don't tell me you're fucking early to the session man. <laughs> <laughs> I, used wait, I used to wait six hours for your fucking ass <laughs> in his own house <laughs> in his own house <laughs> Hey, look, did you track the your album at the Steakhouse? Did you do it there? Or yes. Did, okay, that's what 100%. I think. Yeah. And then it was mixed at uh, Kenny's uh, house. Yeah, his studio. Okay. His, his house. What is it? Kenny's Cabana. All right. <laughs> well, you know, I, I noticed, you know, you're right. When you were talking about Dave, I mean, he was, he was, I think he was on just about every track on your album, right, Steve? Yeah, I, put, you know, I had the same band. I mean, we did the record yeah. in eight days. Right. One, two, one song a day. I cut the, here's the chart. We run the chart. Yep. Fix the mistakes, run over anything that's weird, talk about the, who's going to solo or whatever, and then take two. Was, every song on the album was take two. Yep. Oh, wow. wow and there's fantastic. 25 witnesses to this, so yeah. I'm not making it up. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and it's just like, I, we did it. We don't have to, and then as soon as we got to take it, you know, I might double a guitar part or I might do this, but a minimal, minimal stuff. And then I do the lead vocal that night. We comp it, put it together, and Joe do some background vocals at home. Next song, you know, I mean, you know, and, and that's really, and there are some of the pieces like uh, Journey Through was just one take. That's it. That was what happened. And that was a beautiful track. Low Spark was just the track, and I overdubbed the lead vocal that night. Yeah. That's it. That's the record. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that was what I wanted to do. Like, as opposed to Joe's was very meticulously produced and yeah. brilliantly put together like the, like a Da Vinci painting. Oh, God. detail. <laughs> I mean, I'm more like, you know, Formula One. Let's fucking pedal to the metal and see. Let's see who, you know, gets the, not in terms of a race, but right, in terms right. of intensity. We're doing this. You got one shot. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so it's a different, it's a different mental space. A yeah. different kind of energy. And also just to like combine and putting the albums together in terms of their release and stuff. They see, and the end of the, at the end of the day, they seemed like kind of interesting companions to, to mm-hmm. each other. You know what I mean? Just yeah. because they're, so they're sort of completely different in the in the method. Mm-hmm. In the new Toto, you know what we're calling, you know, the Dogs of Oz, whatever you want to call it, the Dogs of Oz tour yeah. to differentiate. You know, it's not total from 1978. It's not total from 1990. It's not total from 2005. It's not total yeah. 2019. Right. I mean, it's. We were going to leave it. You know, we were all going to go our separate ways. But, you know, with a year off and, you know, the reality of life right. and lawsuits and all the things and everybody gets their percentage and it's all worked out. And people, uh, you know, some people, it, it's complicated. That's all I can say. It's 
sad and complicated. We didn't plan to ask about any of that, actually. Yeah, but, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying it blanket statement. Right. <laughs> sure. Right. Blanket that's, statement. <laughs> I'm not getting into it. But no, that's, no, it, we, don't, we don't want you to. That's fine. But anyway, so, you know, we decided, you know, it makes more sense for us to carry on. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we're going to go out as Joe, Luke and Joe, Joe and Luke, whatever. Yeah. And uh, we're just going to get a great bunch of musicians together and play. And of course, we would play Toto music. So why shouldn't we be fucking Toto? Yeah. We're keeping the fucking banner alive. I've been there. I'm the only guy that's been there for all since day one. I'm the only motherfucker that's been there since day one. He's still with us. Me and Dave, me and Paige. Yeah. And Paige is, you know, Paige works with Joe and I. I mean, he's, you know, we're that team, you know? Right. Unfortunately. And, um, we're, you know, Dave, Dave's still involved. He comes down to rehearsals and helps us out. And he's got a great set of ears. It's really interesting to have a musical. David Paige is your musical director. I know. It's really positive. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it gives him, and, and he's really great at it. And he doesn't have to travel. And it's, you know, we're just keeping keeping his band alive, him and Jeff's band alive. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know, during the downtime, we've had all this time to like look at old clips. You know, I, I mean, for the first time, looked at some of the fucking Byron era shit. And it fucking, regardless of like, you know, th- th- there was some great shit. There was some great tracks, man. You know? I listened to it objectively, you know, mm-hmm. but, you know, yeah, it was a bad fit. Okay. We'll just leave it at that. Right. But it, musically speaking, it was really good stuff. I mean, if you, if it wasn't Toto, you would go, that's a great record. Cause I mean, I thought, you know, James Guthrie did a brilliant job producing that with us. Yeah. It, uh, it was a fun experience. And, uh, he was just the wrong guy for the job, you know, right. and we didn't really get on, you know I mean? What can I say? You know, mm-hmm. he didn't get on with anybody. But uh, I'm sorry it didn't work out. But I'm objectively looking back at it. Yeah, I go like those are some great records, you know. What I'm saying? And there's some great songs in there. And so I'm looking back at all the eras of the band. Like mm-hmm. I, I saw like Total 1978. I couldn't even believe it was me. I looked like I was 12 years old. So I'm saying <laughs> Total is more than one person. Total is the music. Right. Is the music. And when people who have been in the band play the music, it sounds a certain way. Right. Now it's. It's like spicing a, a, a meal. We just added some new flavor to the gumbo. You right. know what I mean? Yep. Adding some different musicians. John Pierce on bass. I mean, he was our bass player in high school. In our high school band with that's, Still Life. That's because the ingredients in Toto are evidently are perishable. So, are they? Yes, they're so. perishable. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to yeah we don't we don't have makeup like the guys in kiss you know like you can retire and have little kiss guys or something like that you know what <laughs> I mean? not little toto guys coming up behind us you know what i mean right. i mean my son has his own career and uh the other guys have their own careers or whatever they do yeah. so i mean that, I mean, that's the only comparison I was actually curious about when you guys do tour uh, i think i read somewhere that you're gonna play some tunes from the these new two new solo albums and maybe some past solo material as well right yeah i mean all everything is on the table the the thing yeah. about this new material and and also the fact that they're coming out together that it was an, another reason for why we put them together is that in in a sense even though they are separate and you know sold records uh, for each of us uh-huh. that it does provide us some new material to use like on a touring cycle as we would normally do if we were just put out a total album you know we would start with with some new stuff from that album and then of course have the hits and deep cuts the, all that kind of stuff so yeah. these two albums serve that purpose so the answer the answer is yeah okay yeah. that's cool hey guys i want to bring out something that uh you know normally i don't think that people really do justice to some of the best Beatles tunes, but Joseph, you and Luke, man, you guys nailed If I Fell. It's such a beautiful ballad. And of course, Lenny Castro performed an amazing performance on on the percussion. But how did yeah. this end up? How did this end up on the on the roster for the songs? Um, you know, it was the same with this one and also with the the Peter Gabriel song, it was the kind of the same thing. I was yeah. taking a break from working on another tune. And sometimes when I do that, I'll go to YouTube or go to, you know, Spotify or whatever and just listen to something. And in both cases, I just, you know, just put different songs, but I was, I went and listened to If I Fell, reminded myself how much I loved it. And then when I was finished, I just started messing around with it. Just like, you know, what would it be like if I did it on a keyboard here, blah, blah, blah. I just started, you know, dicking around with it. And then uh, I got carried away. And then, you know, then the track just sort of finished itself and I put vocals on it. And then, and then it just made sense to, to have Luke do John. Yeah. 
I and you know honestly, it's one of the greatest it's songs exactly. ever. And, and harmony wise, when you start to learn how to sing harmony when you're a little kid, that was my. That's a, that was the song. Yeah, it's like a trainer. It's, it's just like you know, wow, that's what harmony is. It's a, it was a. It's one of the most beautiful counterpoint melody. Absolutely, or not counterpoint, but I mean, just it, it, but it does it's do just counterpoint a, at certain spots. But you know, the wonderful thing is the way I've always thought of it is that you know whoever it was George Martin or who, whomever, uh-huh. it's a, you know one person is singing the melody and the other person is singing both the first and second harmony part bouncing around. That's, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's amazing, I mean, though. it's just how they did that. I mean, yeah. they may have innocently done it. It's yeah. just, I think it was more innocent. I don't think George be. Martin had anything. Maybe not. I think that was just the way that they sang. They were trying to recreate records and the way they thought that, they, you know, just the way we were inspired by what came before us. We were inspired by them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So whatever inspired them, that's what they were emulating, you know? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, it's one of my favorite songs, and my, like I said, I just started messing around with it one day and got carried away, and that's how the Gabriel song happened too. Okay, that's, that's pretty cool. Hey, Luke, uh, on Run to Me, you actually had the chance to get Ringo to play drums and tambourine on it. Yes, I did. Uh, well, that was written for his birthday. Uh, Joseph Page and myself wrote that song as a birthday present for his eighth birthday in July. Okay. And he played on it, and it was like, you know, can I put it on my record? It was like, you know, it's it's this great little small pop song joseph yeah, we did yeah. fun video for zero money with an iphone in the backyard mm-hmm. and brent carpenter his guy filmed him playing drums up at his house yeah and uh we they put it together and it put it out as a birthday present which got messed up and it didn't air properly <laughs> it's okay <laughs> but the whole thing is like can i put this up it's, it's a fun summer you know the summer was such a bummer with all the virus and all that yeah. shit it's a happy song. It doesn't have any political shit. It doesn't have any right. love song. There's no bummers. It's just a dumb song of a guy. I mean, me making fun. Joseph filming me making fun of myself being a rock star. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a fun tune. It's a fun tune. Yeah, the song, you know, the three of us wrote, it's the lyric is basically for our daughters. It's the, the idea that if somebody messes with you, you can run back to dad. That's yeah. the whole lyric, yeah. the lyric thing. We all have daughters. And Ringo was like, I love it. Love the idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's my mate, man. It's just great. I'm at FaceTime with the guy three or four times a week. You know, it just kills me. Man. I love Ringo Starr so much. And, and, he, and he looks younger than both of us. He does. I, I mean, know he's, it. He's, yeah. He's, what is yeah, he's, been here. Joe, he's come by the pad, and, and Joe's been here. He's one of the few people I see. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Joe, he's 80, and he's Ringo. You think I want to get Ringo Starr sick? Are you kidding right. me? Right. You, know, you think we're not taking this shit seriously? We are. Yeah. Everybody should, and then we can get rid of it. That's right. Yeah. Like I said, I, I can't believe how good he looks. It's just I would never put two and two together that he's 80. It's it's amazing. Well, I'm at 80, and yeah. it's like, you know, I, I feel like I'm 80 right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I pulled my fucking back out, and I'm like hobbling around the house like I'm fucking 80 years old. Yeah. That's what happens when you try to suck your own dick. I'm telling you, it's hard at 63. <laughs> You gotta stretch more. I may be old, but I may be old, but I'm still me. <laughs> <laughs> and we wouldn't want it any other way. Oh, skibby song, skibby song. <laughs> That's definitely for dirty old men. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Joe, I want to throw out one more tune uh, to you. And, and the more I listen to it, the more that uh, it really hooked me. And, and the the track is uh, Mistress Winter's Jump. And um, the the vibe on this song is so cool, and and I believe it's like in six eight, and you know the first few notes it got me thinking of like Norwegian wood, for example. But then the vocals kicked in, and it had kind of this I don't know what you would call it, sort of like this Renaissance feel mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. it. Tell us more about this track. Yeah, the track it's a song by the guy I wrote the the uh, title. Go ahead, Luke's gonna take a piss break. Uh, um, it's I wrote it with the I didn't write it actually. It's written by the guy who I wrote Dennis and Tenant with. Okay. A guy named Steve Overton, who's a uh-huh. wonderful, wonderful guitar player, and yeah. has this and has this very sort of uh, uh, Serbic wit and that kind of stuff. Anyway, he had this piece called "Mistress Winter's Jump" that he also credits some old sea shanty, some Scottish or Irish sea That's, shanty. Yeah, he actually credits some guy when you ask him about who wrote it, but it's his tune. Lyrically, it's basically a bad girlfriend breakup in his sort of, uh, you know, acerbically witty way. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love that groove. I love a swashbuckling 6-8 groove. 
you can hear it all over the record. That's like, you know, it's one of my favorite grooves. And so I just fell in love with it when I heard his version of it, which, which is much, much different. And just gave it a stab just because I loved it so much. But yeah, you, what you're hearing is what was intended. Yeah. Yeah, well, you just mentioned Sea Shanty, and that's like one of the things that popped into my mind when I heard it, because it did have that kind of a vibe. And it, this is funny. I just heard on the news the other day that I guess in the world of TikTok and some social media, there's Sea Shanties are like huge right now. There's like some thing happening with sea shanties that, you know, I guess kids are really into. And I, I don't know the whole story on this, but I just heard about <laughs> this the other day. So maybe your timing's right with this song. Maybe it's going to be the, the big one that comes from it because sea shanties are back. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always loved them. I, you know, my whole life, that's been in my DNA. I grew up yeah. with the one I, in part when I was a kid in England. You know, we, I grew up eight, like when I was eight years old, 10, 11, 12 yeah. years old in, in London. So, and, and went to a very British school and just learned that whole history and you know and everything and i love that style i just mm -hmm. love that old irish <laughs> you know yeah yeah great sound is a uh, is luke backer is he still on his break oh no, he's still on his break <laughs> <laughs> hey joe i, I do want to ask you one question i mean obviously you and luke are sort of like like brothers and it seems as if during this past year a couple years you guys have seemed to get closer and closer and um you know, this this has an awful lot to do with how closely you guys have worked even with in the studio or with these two projects, right? Yeah, I mean, he's always been the guy, you know, throughout my time in Toto, but also just in my life, you know, we, we've been friends, you know, much more now than I guess when we were kids. But, yeah. you know, he came in and played on my solo album when I was a kid. I mean, he's always been yeah. there for me, whether I've been in or out of the band. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this last year just became an opportunity for us to spend much more time together because we were working on the albums and working on the videos and coming up with new plans for, for touring Toto. And so we just got close over a period of, you know, a year or more. And also, you also have to remember the last 10 years of touring that we've done has been was, you yeah. know, very, some very heavy things, especially sure. in the last four years. And you get, you know, listen, it's like living in a submarine with somebody. You get close. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there was no penetration. <laughs> yeah. He's back. <laughs> I could still shit through the hole of a lifesaver. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, hey, Luke, one of the funniest things that I've seen in a long time is I just, that. I just did that written down once. <laughs> <laughs> still shit through a lifesaver. Yeah. That's yeah, you know, I'm just a dirty old fuck, man. You know, I mean, everybody thinks I'm going to chill. One day he's going to grow up. <laughs> no, I just grow old. Right. That's what happened. Uh, I'm happy. I mean, we're happy. A couple happy geezers that still got a lot of kick left. There you go. Yeah. yeah, I'm ready to go. I feel. I still feel like I'm 25 at that, man. Yeah, I mean, I may I, not look I, like I, it. I may not physically be capable of it, but uh -huh. I feel. I feel 55 inside. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> I got less teeth. I got like three less teeth. I mean, I'm having, they're starting to do weird shit to my body now. The <laughs> doctors are like, oh, we have to remove this or take this. <laughs> I just got to say, Steve, one of the funniest things that I've seen in a long time was that that video that you posted um, on social media of you like shred shredding in your backyard with your amp right. cranked. That was because you're trying to wake up your neighbors, All I guess. Right, now, let me tell you the story. Here's the, part, the real story. I know Joseph. Now here's where Joseph gets up. All right, Joseph, leave me the room. I'm just switching the space so they can hear yeah, you. Yeah, no. Here it is. I have this next door neighbor. We had a little tiff. You know, uh -huh. he knew. I've been. I've been. I'm the old man on the hill. I've had this house for like 45 years or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> right. And you know, this is the one thing I got to keep before I when I built it up and put gates around it and all this. Stuff. I live in the Hollywood Hills, right? Yeah. I got this guy who lives next door to me. Moved in. And he just, and he, and he, while I was on the road, he just destroyed my yard, just s destroyed all the 40 years of like, you know, covering that I had. And he started a like neighbor war, right? So, you know, well, it's, it's just a classic Hatfields McCoys thing, you know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. a, simple, a simple, like, oh, fun, nice thing, welcome to the neighborhood. Oh, hey, man, I mean, here's my number. It's like, here's my, if you need anything, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it turns into like you know, this hateful back and forth, you know? Uh huh. My my son is autistic. He's ten years old. I right. mean, he's ten years old now, but he was a little kid then. He would get on the roof, and the guy would call the police. 
I go, my son is, listen, if you don't know anything about autism, it's, yeah. it, it, it's a Rubik's Cube, man. It's an right. art. Sure. It's art. He, he, I mean, it's, it's, I have a special needs kid, man. He, I love him to death. He's my fucking soul brother. But, you know, right. he's different and it's high maintenance. And like the neighbors, he got, the guy cut down all the yard and my kid got into his yard. He didn't know there was a yard next door. So he calls the cops, you know, and then it turns into a whole scene. So the cops come to my house. I go, oh, yeah, here's your perp. You know, I come to the gate and I go, oh, here's my son and he's autistic. Here's your, here's your burglar. You know, oh, you were just worried he's going to hurt himself. He's on the roof. I go, he gets out. It's what did they do. Yeah. I can't. You think I am not worried? Look at me. You know? <laughs> and, and then the back and forth. Then the guy looks at me. I go, fuck you. And he's like, fuck you. And then it turns into that, you know? So then 7 a.m. comes along. You know, and then we go. It, it's really stupid. It's just, and, we're, and by the way, we're fine now. Everything's all fine. That's good. But, <laughs> Thank but, goodness. Yeah, there is a happy ending. But um, no, but it led up to this thing. And then the guy starts the leaf blowers like, you know, I mean, you live in the Hollywood Hills. I mean, you know, it's they're nice houses, but they're closer together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's 7 a.m. in the morning with the three leaf blowers going at like you know, 140 dB outside the bedroom. Oh I God. fucking lost my mind, you know. I and, and I, I get up early. Let's see, I'm usually up at like four thirty, five o'clock in the morning every day. I go to bed at eight. It's weird how life changes. But anyway, yeah. getting back to the story. But at the time, you know, it was like seven a.m. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? And I like, and I said, I'm laughing, like talking to my girlfriend Amber. I'm like, maybe I should just get my amp out and fucking rail at this cat and fucking bark back at him. She goes, "Do it." I go, <laughs> "I'm nah, I'm not gonna fucking do that." And she goes, "I dare you." I go, "You dare me?" Oh no. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me? And then I then I just I had to bug up my ass. I fucking ripped the, my practice amp out fucking uh, my office and I put it on the trampoline, my daughter's trampoline, so it's above the dog's head, so I don't rip the dog's face off. <laughs> and uh, I just pointed at the guy's yard, cranked it on ten, and started you know doing what I did. I didn't know she was filming me. She filmed me. <laughs> And she put it on fucking Instagram and it went crazy <laughs> going around the world. <laughs> oh, God, it was so it's funny. Like, you know, I, I'm getting like fucking you know, everybody from, you know, everybody fucking right. loves it. Right. It's, you, know, you make a ringtone out of it or something. I watched that a dozen times and I, I pissed myself every time I watched it. it I mean, so well, it was like on the local news all around the world. Luke, Steve Luther gets mad at the leaf blower. <laughs> I gotta get even with the leaf blower guy and my neighbors who were not mentioned. They knew it was them. They knew it was them. Yeah. The yeah. whole neighborhood, ever, the whole world knows. So you go, you gonna fuck with me again, bud? Want me to mention your name? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. I'm glad she, I'm glad she videoed that. <laughs> they, they sent us champagne for Christmas. I don't drink. I gave it to my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well hey guys luke joe thanks so much for for being with us again and, and the new albums are i found the sun again by steve lukather and joseph williams Dennis and tenet and uh there's some there's some really nice uh merch that you guys are selling for that too the the box set of the of both albums and uh, the colored vinyl and the cds it, look for it because uh and order it now you can pre-order it we're looking forward to seeing it too oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's coming to us as we speak, is from what I understand. Excellent. Cool. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for spending the time with us, and good Thank luck you. to you. We'll talk. Uh, we'll talk again soon. Thanks. Guys. All right, man. Bye bye. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Special thanks to Joseph Williams and Steve Lukather for joining us on this episode of Inside Music Cast. We also want to thank our Inside Music Cast correspondents for their support and dedication, including Brian Pearson in Chicago, Kim Riley in South Florida. Scott Gross in Tampa, Mikhail Ingstrom in Stockholm, Scott Sheriff in Nashville, Don Brightup in Los Angeles, Loretta Sassaman in Seattle, Yinka Oyelese in New Jersey, and Arnaud Legere in Paris. Now you can show your support for Inside Music Cast by making a donation at InsideMusicCast.com. Your donation will help us to continue producing future episodes of Inside Music Cast and keep Inside Music Cast radio streaming 24-7. You can also receive special Inside Music Cast merch, such as t-shirts, masks, stickers, and coasters for your support at various levels. For Eddie Cabello, I'm Rick Such. Thank you for your support of Inside Music Cast.